The most important advice here is to take the word brief seriously. Over the years, I've noticed an almost immutable tendency for students who write more extensive briefs, briefs for each case to quit briefing earlier in the semester. It's just not sustainable to write two pages in advance of class discussion for each case that you're assigned. Much better to find the 20 or so words that are most useful for you. Here's my suggestion for what those words should be. First, uh, your first line should have the case name with annotations indicating which party was the plaintiff and defendant and which party is the appellant or appellee. And, and depending on the course subject, I might add in additional abbreviations for which litigant was the patentee or who's the buyer and seller. In the first line, you should also include the year and the name of the court, or if the judge is a justice or a famous judge, put the judge's name in too. You probably already know that Justice Breyer is relatively liberal when it comes to constitutional law, but you probably don't know what his antitrust jurisprudence is. This simple technique of writing the name of the justice when you brief a case will let you easily start developing fuller pictures of the uh, judicial philosophy of individual justices. So, for example, the first line uh, might say, Jacob and Young's versus Kent. And here, this tells me that Jacob and Young's was the plaintiff, uh, uh, the appellant. I use T and E for appellant and appellee. Uh, uh, respectively, and in this case, it's a contracts case, the S indicates that Jacob and Young was the seller, in this case of services. And Kent was the defendant, and the appellee, and the buyer. Now you could leave out this uh, and infer it from the first parenthetical, but I like to have it there so I can look quick, uh, directly at Kent and know who he or she was. Uh, the case was decided in 1921, uh, uh, in New York, uh, Court of Appeals, uh, which is uh, the highest court of New York, and it was decided by uh, uh, Justice Cardozo. All that's what's in, uh, what I learned from just the first line. Second, I summarized the procedural history uh, by indicating who won below. In this case, I know that in the initial trial court, the defendant won. And that in the initial, and that in the case I just read, which is underlined, I know who won, that the plaintiff won a, a new trial. Third, I then try to summarize the facts of the case in a single declarative sentence. Here, the builder fails to install promised reading pipe. Fourth, I then try to summarize the central legal conclusion. Some people prefer to have question and answer. Can the buyer refuse to pay for insubstantial seller breach? Uh, no, but I prefer to state the issue as a conclusion. These conclusions are the rules that you will take from the case. For example, here I would instead uh, write down, buyer can't refuse to pay uh, for insubstantial seller breach. Sometimes there's more than one issue to summarize. So in this case, I might also add in that uh, not just that the buyer can't refuse to pay for an insubstantial seller breach uh, when there is an insubstantial seller breach, but that damages for insubstantial and non-willful seller breach may be limited to diminution in buyer value instead of cost of performance. Those are the two rules you might get from the case. You might also deploy some of the categories that you've learned in these lectures to help categorize uh, the rules of the case. For example, is the rule of the case a default or is it a mandatory rule? Is it a standard or is it a rule? Fifth and finally, I sometimes would add a sentence summarizing the legal or policy rationale for the rule. For example, for this case, I might add, uh, substantial performance rule deters buyer and seller uh, opportunism. Put these all together and voila, you have uh, a case brief uh, that again lists the key aspect of who the parties are, tells you the procedural history, 
summarizes the facts, the legal rules, and gives the legal uh, policy. My computer tells me this summary is just 65 words long. When it comes time to prepare for final exam, you should condense this brief even further. I re recommend for exam prep that you condense the initial brief down to something that is uh, Twitter length of 140 uh, characters that summarizes the rules that you learn from the case. For example, in this example, I, I might uh, say Jacob and Young's reading, reading pipe, buyer can't cancel for insubstantial non-willful breach, cost of performance can overcompensate, which again my computer tells me is just 122 uh, svelte characters. For homework discussion, use uh, the method uh, th described here to brief uh, the case that I have included in the course materials, or pick one of your own. Remember, be concise.